Tech Talk Travel. Today I'm really excited to have Mr. John Burns as our guest. As we are both attending Hedner, I thought I'd take this opportunity to get John on the show and uh, have a conversation with him. John, great to have you here. It's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Um, John, you've had such an esteemed career in the hospitality industry. I'd like to take you back right to the beginning. What was it that uh, initially brought you to work in this space and what was your motivation? It was a uh, long and winding road. So I graduated university in Canada with a degree in political science and uh, didn't know quite where I was going to go, but the university, which was in the national capital, uh, Ottawa, was looking for someone to run their uh, residences, their dormitories for the summer. They ran a summer hotel and uh, it sounded interesting, so I applied and was accepted to do that. And suddenly I was running this small or not so small hotel operation, did it for several years, moved to Vancouver, British Columbia, uh, where I took over management of the largest uh, university conference center, and then uh, was asked to join Hyde International, uh, worked first in Vancouver and then corporate office, and really was in the hotel business uh, until 1992, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, began consulting on my own, so now 25 plus years mm. as an independent consultant. Mm. It's, been, it's been a journey, and it's been a lot of fun. I can imagine. It's, well, it's a fascinating industry anyway. So tell me, what was the first computer system that you worked on when you were doing that? What, what systems were they using back then? Oh, uh, they, they weren't even computer systems. So the ones I uh, worked with were NCR 4200 uh -huh. posting machines yeah. with all the buttons and you uh, pull a lever. Uh, and uh, the, the surge into uh, something more advanced in terms of automation uh, was to go to a, a, a memory typewriter. Yeah. So we could do sales proposals that we would uh, pre-programmed. Then it was on to Wang word processing and whatnot. It, it was quite the evolution. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when I was at Hyde International, we uh, brought our first IBM PC in, and everyone was uh, absolutely fascinated with the possibility of word processing and certainly spreadsheets, and it just mushroomed from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember the days doing night audit with these big floppy disks that you'd have to take out the back and, and pop them in. And every, even back then, everyone was so excited about the fact that you could do backups to these massive disks. Like, oh my God, look at this, it's amazing. It's so true, <laughs> and it's been such a remarkably quick evolution from then. When you think about it, it has, hasn't it? And yet so many people in our space kind of complain about how lethargic technology development often is in hospitality. But I think, you know, generally, when you look back over the, let's say, the last 20 years, is, we've actually made, I think, uh, enormous growth when it comes to tech. Uh, what, what, what are your thoughts around that? I, I both agree and disagree. I think in terms of peripheral uh, uh, automation, yes. So PCs and a lot of things have gone a long way. Some of our core systems, our property management systems, and central reservation systems, have been a good deal slower to evolve. So we're, we're still struggling there. Yeah. Uh, we... we uh, struggle with the balance of high touch, high tech, and uh, achieving a, a satisfactory balance where we feel that the technology is helping us in our guest experience rather than hindering it is still a challenge for us. So based on your experience, why do you feel that that's such a challenge for the industry? Because I agree with you with PMS side of things, for example. Legacy PMSs seem to be something that's very hard to move away from for certain properties or, mm -hmm. or types of properties or even some big chains. Why is that? In, in your, from your perspective and your experience and, and even your discussions with hoteliers directly, what, what, what kind of input do you get from them that would give you the impression as to why that would be? It's a complicated uh, issue. There are a number of factors. Without a doubt, we need technology. We'd like to see it advance, but we're a very hard market to sell to. We're very fragmented, so when someone builds a new system, it's complicated, it takes time, it takes investment. Actually selling it to us is a long, long process. So we're a difficult marketplace. Combined with that, with the fact that uh, we tend to be slow to budget money and slow to buy, uh, it makes a sales cycle very long. Uh, then we are very fragmented, so we're all looking for something slightly different. So for the vendors we'd like to see step up, uh, they're understandably reluctant or, or slow to come to market with some of these things. Mm. Um, we've expected at times that big players like IBM or uh, Microsoft would dive in and uh, they have looked at us and I think in many cases said, uh, this is just 
There are simpler markets than hospitality. Mm. That said, uh, we see vendors now, a new generation of vendors, uh, some of them uh, in Europe, like Amadeus, some out of uh, the Far East, uh, like Shiji, uh, that uh, may well upset the marketplace and bring some interesting innovation. I'm, I'm more optimistic than ever. Well, let's talk a little bit about the European side of the market because mm -hmm. you're right, there's a lot of development going on in there, especially around hotel tech. Yes. And um, Amadeus is an example of, of a larger group doing that, but there's also a whole range of smaller startups. Muse, for example, yes, Oki. Okay. Clock. There's a whole bunch of all of these types of open, let's say, open API integrated solutions offering marketplaces with with integrations to other services. Apple is another good example. Yes, indeed. So, uh, what's your take on on their presence in the market, and how do you feel that they can best influence or impact the market when they're going up against the Amadeuses of the world, and and also working with big change, trying to make traction in big change, who, as you've said, are quite difficult to get to change. For sure. Uh, I, I welcome them in the marketplace. They have a very great challenge if they're going to sell to and service the big chains, but they play an incredibly important role in being disruptive. So uh, the, some of the companies you've mentioned uh, work on openness and open API. In some respects, even more importantly, they have reimagined the user interface. So they said, uh, we have to be relevant and easy to use for our staff who are 19, 20, 22 years old, who are from a different generation of technology and looking for a very good user experience, simplicity, convenience, uh, usability. So we've got this new generation of, of entrants in property management systems and revenue management who are really forcing everyone in the marketplace to rethink their interfaces, to rethink their openness. Um, they're difficult, some of them won't be around, some of the vendors will fall by the wayside, but they are incredibly important to the overall uh, success and evolution of the marketplace. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling. Yeah, you made an interesting point about the, the user experience, and I think because given our industry typically has a high turnover of, of staff, yep. um, and people that often work in hotels don't want a career there, they're mm -hmm. often fill in roles, so having systems that are easy and very intuitive for people that don't understand or know the industry very well to be able to use, I think is also a very important point. Uh, I, I totally agree. Uh, we need systems that are easy to learn, easy to master, but also unobtrusive mm. because we're not hiring desk clerks as system operators. They have to be hosts. And if we're uh, interrupting that uh, process of being a host to our guests, we're doing something seriously wrong. Absolutely. Also, just one other point around this is there's a lot of dialogue and discussion about the the removal or the future of the front desk mm -hmm. because with these new interactive systems and, and obviously mobile driven platforms, how do you see the front desk's future in our in our industry? I, I, I think we're going to have we're going to continue to have a hotel to guest interface. So there's going to be contact. It may not be person to person in all cases. It may not be behind a desk. So uh, we're going to have to, as a, a technology platform, uh, accommodate that change and say, uh, if you only want to contact the hotel via smartphone, that's fine. If you want to see somebody, uh, whether it's by text or somebody pops out from their office, whatever, we have the technology that will support that. So I, I do believe we're going to see a reduction in front desk. We're still going to have service islands somewhere in the lobby, uh, but it's going to be in, uh, absolutely essential for the technology uh, to, again, not be obtrusive, to be convenient to uh, the hotel staff so they can find the data they need, and, and we're talking more and more about personalization, about uh, recognition of guests. So we, we need to have that data on a device that works for us. It's got to be convenient and it's, it must not get in the way. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, you also mentioned earlier Amadeus and Shiji as mm -hmm. uh, these bigger companies. We've seen last year and historically as well, leading up to last year, quite a few acquisitions and uh, purchases of smaller companies. Mm -hmm. Do you think in the future that we're going to see more of that? Do you think these bigger companies will start to consume smaller groups or smaller uh, soft software houses or developers in order to, to expand their product range or to essentially 
conglomerate the market. What's your take on companies like Sabre, Amadeus and Shinji? Because I think there's, they're the main big players in our space today. So how do you see their dynamic? Uh, I would uh, include those three. I would also consider, uh, pardon me, Oracle. Well, of course, yeah. yeah. So th yeah. there are some others. I, I think there's still a great deal more consolidation to happen. Mm. In some respects, it will be to gain good design ideas, to gain talent, or to gain mar market share. It's yeah. going to be a combination of things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm also inclined to think that we're going to have an economic downturn, whether it's six months or 18 months from now or two years. And I suspect there's going to be uh, a bloodbath at that point. Really? Because I, I think the hotel industry is going to retrench and for a, a year, two, three years, not spend much on technology. It's going to be difficult on some of the vendors who rely on constant acquisition of new customers. And as a result, there'll be acquisitions, there'll be consolidation. Yeah, yeah good point, interesting point. So it, 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 there's going to be change. But the magic of this marketplace is we keep seeing new faces. We keep seeing people who uh, recognize how simple it is to put together systems, design new systems. Uh, they sometimes don't realize the complexities inherent in the marketplace, but we still see innovation all the time. So that's good. That is good. We'll get uh, the big buying the small, but we'll get all these new entrants at the same time. Yeah, great, great. And, and John, if someone was to come to you who perhaps is just graduating from school or is interested in starting a tech company, what would be some of the, the, the main advice that you'd give someone, given, given obviously your experience in this industry, your career, what would be some top advice that you could give someone who's just coming in? I'd say first, welcome, because we're looking for new faces. I'd say try to look at our industry as a whole and where we have pain points because we don't want just replacement of current systems. We need fresh thinking that allows us to use uh, newer generation technology, and I'm thinking here of the promise of the cloud mm -hmm. that's really uh, relatively unrecognized at this point in the hotel systems. These people can look at what we're doing with our old systems, property management systems, CRS, CRM, and say, let's reimagine it. So I, I think there's an opportunity uh, for fresh thinking and fresh faces. I think it's vital to us. The, there's, people are going to travel. We're going to need places for them to stay. We're going to need things for them to do. We're going to need people to coordinate. There's going to be good jobs in travel and hospitality. So there's a good future, there's a good career, mm. um, but we've got to be, we, we, we've, we've got to be creative and think about doing it differently. Our, our customer base is changing. Their interests, their aspirations, as you said, how they contact us, whether they want a front desk and whatnot, all that's changing. The, the legacy hotel business is, is not necessarily recognizing that. The fresh faces will help with new systems and new energy and uh, a, a new language to deal with these fresh challenges. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's just unlimited opportunity. And also I'd like to ask you, how do you feel um, the Western market in terms of hotels and also tech providers are preparing themselves or essentially catering for the Chinese traveler? Uh, coming into the Western world, because obviously we've, we've, there was a Chinese session here at Hedna mm -hmm. talking about their expectations or their requirements, and I'd like your take on, on, on that, because they come purely with mobile, essentially, and they pay for everything in China on their mobile. Yep. We need to bring that into our market space, so how, how can we best do that for, for, that, for that sector, given that it's only going to continue to grow? We recognize the potential marketplace. We have made some early efforts, in, especially in the big chains with the, uh, the properties in the, the bridgehead cities where people are coming in from the Orient, uh, the, the Mandarin language menus, that sort of thing. Uh, most of it's cosmetic, not serious. Uh, as an industry, we're, we're still tantalized, but I don't think we've taken the Chinese opportunity as seriously as it merits. Uh, we are only starting now, but at least now we're starting to think in terms of accommodating them in payment. Uh, we have been very uh, first world centric and assuming everyone has a credit card and uh, 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 end of story. Well, no, 
there are huge markets that want to work with us differently, and it's a challenge to us to think differently. At this Hedna conference, there's been discussion about uh, alternatives to the credit card number, and that's encouraging. Mm -hmm. That's encouraging. Mm -hmm. So for travelers from China and from other places, um, we're ever so slowly moving in the right direction of being uh, easier to work with and more accommodating. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'd like to see it happen more quickly, mm -hmm. but it's happening. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And I think just finally, I'd like to talk a little bit about the development, especially here in the U.S. market. Jan Freitag's keynote speech yesterday was mm. quite interesting how he said that the limited brand, brands um, and the luxury side of the market seem to be dominating the space at the moment. One of the questions I asked him after his, um, in, uh, his uh, presentation was, what is it that the mid-sector could do in order to try to fight back some or gain back some traction there? What are your thoughts? The mid-sector suffers from overbuilding. The, the, it's been a very attractive development area. So uh, we need to have a new equilibrium as uh, supply goes down to, and uh, demand catches up. The alternative accommodation providers have been very good for us. And here I'm thinking, pardon me, particularly of Airbnb, because they have challenged the hotel business to be more than just a provider of a bed for the night. They are saying in a very significant way, though, though we in the hotel business tend to, tend to downplay their impact, I believe they are saying to us quietly, you have to be better hosts. And there's the opportunity for mid-market, and, and they're, they're stepping up to it. So uh, whether it's uh, uh, happy hours, cocktail hours, whether it's a better breakfast, whether it's a, uh, a host in the lobby, there's an opportunity for the mid-market uh, to establish itself as more of a host, to differentiate itself, to say we're, we're a, a good place to say. I, I look at companies like Hyatt, and they're developing Hyatt House. People have Indigo, uh, others have any number of these brands. Uh, and I think we are in a slow um, evolution into something that's more appealing. And as our mid-market product becomes more appealing, it's going to become uh, more successful or reattain success. Mm, good. On that note, John Burns, thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. It's been great to have you on the show. Thank, thank you. you. Folks, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed that, make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon for the notifications. And until next time, it's bye from LA. Bye-bye.